So for the rest of the uh, stream, for about an hour or so, I'd like to do something a little bit more special. A lot of people ask me for general tips on how to improve, how to gain up in rank in various different games. So I want to take you guys through the different kinds of practice that pro gamers do. Grubby, this is your mother. Go wash the dishes. No, th that's okay. That's okay. It can wait a little bit more. Let's do this first. Now, there are different kinds of people, different kinds of players, and different kinds of practice methods. So you need to see which type you um, identify the most with. Okay. I can only elaborate to the fullest about my own practice methods. So a lot of the information that I give you will be drawn from my own life. But let me just give you a few types of players. I'd like to start with the uh, story of how Moon practices. Spirit Moon, a knight elf from Korea. He would... I spent like three weeks in our same room with him because they grouped pro gamers two per room. And that was for a tournament in China. Can you imagine a three weeks long tournament? We would play like one match per two days. One map. But uh, anyway, the way he would do it was he would wake up in the morning and download every replay that's available. He would watch them all in a row. Sometimes one time speed, sometimes two, sometimes four. He just wanted to get the stretch for what is out there. How are people all over the world playing games right now? Your matchup, obviously. And after he had seen them all, he would feel inspired, much like a painter could be inspired by walking around in the park of the middle of the city. So he would draw upon that, feel inspired, and he would select, of course, based on his own beautiful mind, and you need to be inspired by your mind, he would uh, pick a few things that he liked the most, and he would try them out. So he would uh, either hit the ladder, or he would find a practice partner of a race that he saw the trick, or the method, or the creeper out, or the strategy against, and then he would emulate that. So he would copy it. And so when you do it like that, you get a lot of impressions for how everyone is playing, and what is out there what you want to be countering and you also get a feel for what it's like to play against it because you can either ask someone to play a certain style against you or you can counter the standard which you generally are quite likely to meet when you hit the ladder with the trick that you saw what you don't get is 100 percent perfection in your execution because that requires repetition and he would play for about 10 to 12 hours and then go to sleep. And that's it. That's that's about it. Now, there's other players. They will play the same strategy over and over and over and constantly find little details. Details that seem almost too small to care about. But when you put them together, they form a greater coherence, a greater whole, uh, a high efficiency and a very high execution value. When you look at Fly, he did not deviate his build order very much. He did not play one burrow tech and then two burrow tech and then like all out harass. Yeah, he was actually really creative and he came up with a lot of new strategies, but when he had a strategy, he would pretty much just execute it to perfection. His micro was rivaled by very few. And he's a Chinese orc player. And he would win against people because he battled so well. He microed the fight so well. He was also a very aggressive player. And then you have players who... And we're now moving into the third type of player. Who practice... They do a fair amount of replay watching. Maybe a lot. They try out a lot of different things. But they also think a lot about how to counter specific opponents. And this gets more relevant when you are a tournament player. If you know who you're going to be facing, you could play bad openings, which will work out well against certain known openings from opponents. So this is the counter type of player. Now, the merits of a counter type of player is that you know what your opponent is doing, you know what you're doing, and you know what you're doing is good against what he's doing. Um, it also gives 
the opponent the feeling that you're map hacking, whereas really you're not, of course. So they can feel very troubled by the amount of tricks that you're doing. Now, the disadvantage of it is one, it takes a lot of practice to prepare for a single opponent. You're doing a lot of specific tricks that may only work against a certain style of play. So there's a large time investment for very few effective games that you can get out of it. Whereas the execution style player, he doesn't really need to think about how he uh, has to play because he's always doing the same thing anyway. So he, he can afford to get really good at it. For Heroes of the Storm players, you may recognize this when you click on someone's account and they're level 20 with Brightwing, but the next highest level hero is level 9. So you can become an expert at one thing, and we call that, uh, in, in tennis, that would be someone who's very good at a service game. Such a powerful service wins him a lot of games already. Then you've got the brainy players who play loads of different strategies, like Moon for instance, and who try to always surprise the opponent and make something look like A, but it's actually B. Then you've got counter type of players, like uh, I'm, I'm quite a counter player. I study my opponent and I try to get under their skin. So when I play ladder, I don't have the best of win rates per se, because I'm not really uh, practicing the most solid style 100 times. I'm just doing a lot of different things. I'm having my opponents do a lot of different things to me. And then when it's, t when it's finally game time, tournament time, that's when I start to refine my execution and to choose which direction I want to go in. Which often meant that if there was a tournament like uh, in a week, maybe I would be underprepared. But if there was a tournament in two months, I'll be very well prepared. Uh, I wasn't always like this though. I started out when I was like 17 or 18 years old. I was actually uh, a re repetition and execution style player. And I was not worried about what to play really. I knew what I was going to do and the opponent, well, he had to go and counter me. So there's a... Uh, and over time that changed because uh, the scene, the amount of players that we were playing against were getting smaller and smaller. Now, uh, so there was actually more value in studying your opponents. Now, I'm going to start a game soon, but I want to show you the difference between just playing a ladder game and starting a game with a purpose. This is what I was going down to. Sorry for the big preface and prelude. Every day when you start to play, if your goal is improvement and not just having fun, you want to start the day by saying, what do I want to learn and what am I going to play when I know that I face against a night elf? What am I going to do when I know I face against an undead? Okay, and what am I currently weak at? What do I want to improve? What do I want to learn? Now, if you play ladder, you don't know what race you're going to be playing against. So you kind of have to make a four a four ways uh, practice plan. If I face this, if I face this, if I face C, if I face D, okay? So now for instance, if I face a human player on, a, on any map, I want to, the, I want to uh, really improve my third burrow timing because it always gets canceled and I'm gonna prioritize it over war mail, boots of speed or a third grunt. This could be a plan that I have. And then I want to measure the Greetings, value of friend. that plan. Thank you for subbing, Sauna Palvi. So, I cannot 100% foresee the effect of delaying third ground, war mail and boots to get that third burrow first. But I do know that every standard game I have been playing with my previous style, I always get my third burrow cancelled. Hypothetically speaking. So if I face a human in ladder soon, I'm going to make my third burrow really fast and then see how it pans out. And I want to learn from that information. And I want to probably do that three to five times minimum. And this could be my practice plan for a day when I meet Orc versus Human. Now against Undead, I have noticed, for example, that I always fall behind in creeping in the mid game. So instead of harassing with Blade and creeping my second, I want to creep with both of my heroes together. Just race him and see if that pans out well. And I want to try that three to five times and so on and so on. Every time I lose a single game, due to the nature of Warcraft being very much a game of skill, if I lose a single game, I'm gonna see that as a symptom of a weakness. 
And so I will not lose a single game without analyzing why I lost. It isn't just like, it isn't like streaming, like when I usually play where I lose a single game and it's like, oh, well, it just happens. Like, no, that is not acceptable as a pro gamer or someone who is 100% busy with improving and not playing and entertaining and improving like I'm doing now as a streamer. I have been talking for a while. I have a lot more to say on the topic, but let's uh, let's do what I might do on a day that I might want to improve my game. So I'm going to search soon, and if I meet an undead, I want to practice Blade into Torrent Chieftain with tier three. That's what I want to practice. I'm not going to say maybe I'll do Shadow Hunter if A B C, maybe I'll do T C if X Y Z. No, I'm just going to play Blade T C no matter what whatever he does. And the advantage of that is that I learn in all situations that Blade into TC is actually good. By not posing a question to myself in the middle of the game by having like, oh, if I see this, if I see... No, I eliminate the entire scouting into reaction thing. I thank you. So I'll just... Grubby, Mahola, Nui, Lo. Seriously, this does help a lot. Much thank less you. than three. Thank you, Resikan, very much. I'm glad to hear that. So, instead of saying like, every time I see Crypt Fiend, I go TC. Every time I see Ghoul, I go Shadow, for example. And if you keep playing like that, you'll never get data from the other side. No Kappa Pride. So, I will say, okay, Undead, Blade TC every time. And I will learn the spectrum of possibilities that uh, are countered well by TC. After that, once you understand what counters what, that is when you start creating scouting timings to do the thing that you know is good in what situation. So if I find out that TC is great against abominations and I have time to decide, I see abombs first, then I'll make TC. That's what I learned from that. Because I see I won half of my games on those Blade TC practice days and all the half that I won, oh, guess what? It was against abominations. So if I know I'm going to be playing an abomination player later, I will go TC. Just an example, right? Okay, so now let's create four things that we're going to be doing probably regardless of what happens, unless something really unexpected happens. So, Undead, Blade TC Tier 3, no Spirit Walkers. I'll see how that pans out. Night Elf, I'm going to harass their Moonwells with level 1 Blade every single time with a shop on the middle of the map. And we're going to keep up the harass. And then we're going to get Shadow Hunter and Raider Walker, for instance. Huh? Let's go Shadow Hunter every time. Uh, and then Orc versus Orc. I'm going to go for uh, Tech before Barracks and just uh, get a shop and just harass him. Try to keep both of us low level and capitalize off of really fast Tech and Shadow Hunter. And then for the fourth matchup against un uh, Human. I am going to not harass him. Guess what? I always harass because I believe that this rule that you have to stay on the human is the correct one. I have learned this over many years, but it's such a habit now. It's such a rule that it is time to reinvestigate that assumption. So let's reinvestigate the assumption. Let's only creep. We're not going to harass and see what a blade three can give us against human. Or are we just going to lose all our burrows against water elemental spam? Because you see, I always start with harass against human. So let's not. Let's see how it feels. All right, I'm going to launch a game and we'll do these four things. Okay, perfect. Human and uh, not a bad one. So remember what we said? Instead of harassing, which is our de facto state of being against human, we're going to only creep and see how that pans out. And it's not a bad map for it. And these were just four random things that I chose to do per matchup in the last hour. But it's part of a, a greater whole to show you guys how I used to play and practice. So the question is, do I still want to know how he creeps when I'm deciding to creep anyway? And I think the answer is yes. You still wanted to make it look like you're going to harass. You want to make him make small adjustments to make his creeping safer. And you want to also prevent the most greedy possible shit. Like, let's say if he goes for a fast expansion, then I want to know. Then I'm going to change my plan. 
but basically if what he does is normal which is Murkamp creep into this or this or this even if he does that we will play creeping we're gonna go for a quick foodie lounge as that will support us to go into the map Always afraid. Oh, always, <laughs> always makes me afraid. Thanks, Enfuck bloody. Okay, I'm still gonna make a second borrow, but I just wanted to make sure to uh, get that voodoo lounge early so it doesn't slow me down going onto the map. <laughs> oh, I forgot to scout out. I said I will and then I didn't. Okay, let's just scout late. We'll be cleaning up after him with the info, but uh, it'll be fine. I'm not going to heal solve this uh, grunt yet, and he did indeed do mercenary camp creeping, at least we know that. And then I think we can probably go steal a troll. 1900, the troll berserker becomes available. Unless he already gets it, of course. Let the killing begin. Yes. Word, word. What you want? Something you do in the floor. Face the mud. I am yours. Yes. Task is there. Are you here and obey? Hey. What you want? So now we go check his. I am yours. Oh. Yes. Hey. Do you want act? Yes, Lord. Master, I am yours. Oh. We follow his archmage with the peon. Yes, yes Lord. And Excellent as I said, choice. we just go creeping. So we, we stay true to that mantra. And it'll be quite surprising because normally yes, they expect the blade to just right click them. Yes. We use the peon to scout. See if he buys boots. He did. Keep trying to trace where he goes. I actually kind of like this opening. I haven't lost any burrows yet. There you are. And we're level 3 same time as him. So, if I had to rate this so far, I would rate it a perfect 5 out of 7. I'm gonna put the peon at the lab. He has cloak. He might use it soon. Master? Yes, Lord. Something doing? Something task is there. Yes! Double. What do you want? Something doing? Master? Yes. Yes, Lord. Excellent toy. Yes. What do you want? Something is doing. I am yours, master. Look what a blade three can do. It's crazy. What you want? Yes, Lord. Yes. No I am yours. Hey, master. My blade. Hey. And pendant. Choice. Ha! Hey. Excellent choice. 
Yes, Lord. Taste of my blade. Ha! Hey. Huh? Smoke, what do you want? Yes. Nice troll, too. Yes. What do you want? Scary. Come on, I'll be my huh? next big dead. We are oh. Excellent choice. For the burning blade! And he's stuck. So because we know that. I'm gonna abuse it. Abuse it. I think I saw a Beastmaster incoming again. Or maybe not. Nice, class plus nine. War mail. Excellent choice. Are you hero and obey? Use my power. Work complete. Yes, Lord. Yes. Excellent choice. What task is there? Say the word. Yes. I am yours. You bought TP again. You know, this is one of the better games I've had against human, for me at least, not for him. And it all came from a simple idea. What if we just creep and we don't care about him? Everything else followed from that. I'm gonna sell my boots yes. now. Oh, are you here? I dream Yes! Research complete! Are you here and my lead. We need more number. Who be my next big dead? Oh! It be a pleasure. There. Get your scroll. Yes, I yes, am yes, yes, my lead. Yes, yes. Yes. Use my power. What task is there? Direct my blade. Yes, and we're ready. Something is doing. Oh, yes. oh, oh, right when we're ready, he presents himself. Bend over, please, sir. So we actually learned a lot from this practice method. Now I'm not saying it's gonna go like this every time. We need to think about what happens if he Archmage level 2 and then quickly goes for my base. What happens if, etc, etc. But for now we're pretty happy with the result. Plus 19 damage. Oh yeah. I am yours. Yes, Chieftain. Who be made something? I am yours. Yes, sir. I dream the work task is there. Word work. work. Yes, sir. Say the word. I am yours. Are you here to do it? What task is there? Who be my next I am yours. Day. Yes, Chieftain. What task is there? Spirit. Mm. Yes, sir. I dream the work yes. task is there. Research. Mm. I am yours. Yes. What task is there? Something is doing. Oh, yes, I am one. We need more 
Go blade. 237. 237 without level 5. What? I don't want to know what blade 5 can do then. 284. <laughs> yes. Yes. So. Oh, sorry for the green screen thing, but oh well. So is it. Uh, blade 5. Yeah. Mass creeping. So then you watch the replay and you see what was my weakest points. I can just go through it because I said it's my last game and it's true. So the only way you'll get more content is if we actually watch the replay. So even the people that say, just go play a game. No. This is all you get <laughs> for now. So let's see what would have happened if he harassed me at some point. Ready to work. Uh, we reveal the map for now, Ready we make order. the colors normal, and we don't need to reveal the map. Okay, so he keeps this. Ready for How fast is his tech? Pretty fast, no arcane tower, full wall off. So he played it pretty safe, and I, I honestly believe if I went to harass him, I wouldn't have nearly as good of a game. Job's done. Job's done. So Job's he goes done. to get level 3 here. And it all seems very clean. Now if I went to straight harass him here, I kill maybe one or two peasants, I drop half life, use double wind walk, I kill maybe one creep, I steal maybe one, he'll be level 2.7 and I'll be level 1.5. One Instead, we're both 3. This is infinitely, infinitely, infinitely better. And partly it's because the map is long. Now, had he gone straight for me, I would have had the Woody Lounge to warn me. And I was always fairly close to my base. So I really like this. The riskiest part was where I creeped this. What if he comes there? But all my grunts were full life. One really cool element of all this was that I had a peon at his lab. I mean, his murk camp. And was able to get a troll berserker. That really helps to defend this kind of harass. And then sending it to the laboratory to be able to deny the Cloak of Shadows usage. As you can see, Blade Master is full in inventory, so it would not have been possible to use a Dust of Appearance. Plus, when do you ever account for a Cloak of Shadows? But I had a peel there. That is really nice. So I think, even though it's just one game, until it goes horribly wrong, maybe we can play like this every time against Human on Maelstrom. I mean, uh, Melting Valley. So we learned something there. My own old practice routines coming into play to be useful once again. I am yours. What do you want? Yes, hello. Something need doing? No great work has it there. Yes, hello. Are you hero and the bait? I am yours. Take to my bait. Yes, time to die. Yes. Work. Yes, hello. Excellent push. Four. Oh. Yes, Lord. I am yours. 